to share with you all a little discovery, if I may, that I made in my 30s when I was surrounded by my friends and family, all finding love, getting married, and you know what comes next? <laughs> the baby in the carriage. So I was surrounded by friends having babies. And whenever you're faced with a mother-to-be, it's a universally accepted question to ask the mother, what do you want to have, a boy or a girl? And it's a universally accepted response to this question to say, I don't care as long as my baby is healthy. The only thing that I want to have is a healthy baby. Now, I've been involved with plenty of these conversations myself over the years where I've said things like, gosh, wouldn't it be a worse nightmare to have a child that was born unhealthy. And then the other person may say things like, yeah, what would we do? Our life would be over if we had a child with a disability. We've all been there, we've been in these conversations. In fact, these words have floated out of my mouth many, many times and smacked me back in the head many times without really taking any effect. And then all of a sudden, it took me till I was 34 to realize I'm the unhealthy baby. I'm the baby that I've been talking about, that I've heard people say that I wasn't wanted. The only thing I want to have is a healthy baby. So does that make me everyone's worst nightmare? So I looked into this a bit further and I'm not alone. According to these medical odds, 20% of us Australians are currently living with some form of disability. I knew that I wasn't alone. I've been to a few Paralympic Games. I've met thousands of super amazingly hot Paralympic athletes. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't alone in this. And when you look at these odds, it becomes quite clear that disability is in fact likely, it's consistent, it doesn't discriminate, it's natural. It's a chance. So when we think about having this healthy baby, we're pretty much saying, give or take, that you want to have an able-bodied child, or an AB, as I like to call you all. So <laughs> when you're thinking about an able-bodied child, in the medical world, we generally assess this as a child with 10 fingers, 10 toes, two arms, two legs, and I don't know, a few of those major vital organs that you may or may not need. But does two arms and two legs automatically equate to being happy, successful? Does 10 fingers and 10 toes guarantee you joy and prosperity, even health? We know the answer to that question is no. Because I'm sure you're like me and you've met plenty of able-bodied people that aren't that healthy aren't overly happy, miserable, and not overly successful, right? So then why is it okay to automatically assume that disability is lesser than? Why is it okay to associate disability as being an automatic reduction in the status of a person? Why is that okay? Why is it okay to even say that disability is your worst nightmare? If I said right now, put up your hand if you think you're normal. Come on, put it up. I'm guessing if there was anybody that was game enough to do it, you probably wouldn't be that popular at morning tea. But I think the most disabling thing that we do to ourselves is this quest for normalcy, this hunger for perfection. When I looked up the word disabled in the latest thesaurus entry, 2009, the antonyms are the opposite to me are words that I've been called on really good days. But they're words that I've been called chipper, fit, healthy. I drink lots of green juice. I'm definitely whole. Now, I'm like you. I too want to have that healthy child. Of course, it's innate, it's natural. I'm desperately trying to find out whether my muscle wasting disease 
will in fact be passed on to my future unborn children. I get it. But we've just seen the chances of having a healthy child. We just saw them, and I've freely admitted that hearing that I'm the unwanted baby and hearing that people like me are people's worst nightmares, I told you how it affected me, and I would consider myself a woman with a fairly healthy dose of self-worth. So I told you all that. So what can we control in this scenario? We can't control whether we're going to have a healthy child to an extent. So what if we took out that word healthy and chucked it aside? And we brought in a word that describes something we can control. So what can we control in any scenario in life? We can always control our words, our language, and our attitude and our emotions, right? And our words and our language, they're so powerful that they can shape how we view the world, how we view ourselves, and more importantly in this situation, how other people view themselves. So we took out the word healthy and put in the word happy. What if we just started saying, all we want to have is a happy child?